So, when I first watched this episode, I could have sworn I had dreamed it up. But who oh boy, when I was scrolling through some old episodes, imagine my shock when I remembered it was real. Hot Potato Cafe. God, where do I even begin? Gordon goes to Philadelphia to help a family business in ruins. Three ambitious souls, armed with more enthusiasm than experience, decided to jump feet first into the restaurant biz. I'm sure you know how the story goes from there. One day we just kind of looked at each other and said, somebody should open a really good restaurant. The cafe, owned by sisters Claire and Catherine, along with their sister-in-law Erin, was a potato-themed dream turned nightmare to say the least. Three sisters who are all on the verge of a breakdown. Located in Fishtown, East Philadelphia, the owners opened the doors without a singular clue about running a restaurant. Instead of focusing on what mattered most, the food, they went all out on the decor. When we opened Hot Potato was to make this a very comfortable, casual, friendly environment. In truth, there were potatoes everywhere, but nobody who actually knew how to cook one. Then came the fateful day when a local food critic dropped a review that shook them up real bad. A local paper had come in and they wrote an article and it, they called us Spuddy Hell. Its headline was literally titled Spuddy Hell. You can't make this stuff up, I swear. That aside, Hot Potato Cafe was roasted, not in the oven, but in the court of public opinion. Next thing you know, the review went viral. But if you thought that all publicity was good publicity, well, it definitely wasn't in this case. There we were sitting inside waiting for customers to come and they weren't coming. The poor sisters had bet the farm on this place, pouring their life savings. The three of us all chipped in pretty much our whole life savings. About a quarter of a million dollars into it. Believe me, the debt was piling up faster than Melanie's gloopy raw flour mashed potatoes. We owe them like $780 on insurance. Desperate times called for desperate measures, so they turned to family for help. Did this go out? My niece Danielle had some back of the house experience. Enter their niece Danielle, a mere 21 years old who was thrust into the role of head chef. But if you thought that she was an up and coming prodigy, well, why didn't you take a listen to what Danielle had to say about it? Even though I don't want to be uh, a chef, I was willing to help her out any way I could. No culinary school diploma, no hours slaving away in a professional kitchen, just a young woman trying to make her family proud. And trust me, the rest of the family had their own opinions about it. At times it feels like this restaurant's sucking the life right out of me. But Ramsey was quick to discover that the poor girl was drowning. Overwhelmed out of her depth, Danielle found herself trapped in a hot mess of a kitchen with no lifeline in sight. Potatoes were burnt, undercooked, literally everything except perfectly cooked. Why did you come here as a head chef? Just to help out the family. This is not a career choice for me. But would Ramsay be able to turn things around for this uh, weirdly potato-obsessed restaurant? Well, stick around to find out. Spuddy Howe, right now, was being very kind, because the food is dreadful. Turns out, despite Ramsay's best efforts, the cafe joined the long list of places that couldn't hash it once Ramsay went back home. As for Danielle, well, she took the experience as a lesson, but had bigger things going on in her life than sitting around crying about what could have been. But I'm gonna save the juicy details of what happened to them after the show until the very end of this video. Before I get to that, let's take a look at how they reached the bottom in the first place. See, when Ramsay sat down for the tasting, he asked for a few recommendations off the menu, but none of them were potato related. The whole hot potato theme and not one hot selling potato dish? What's the speciality of the house? Crab cakes, shepherd's pie, pierogies. Pierogies. Again, you can't make this stuff up. But Ramsey was bummed. He knew that the owners had given up and they didn't even realize it themselves. Anyway, Ramsey decided to place an order for everything potato. Hot potato soup, potato skins, and of course, the classic shepherd's pie. But considering none of these had any great reviews at all… It's thick. It looks a mess. 
soup was bland and lumpy, the potato skins were old and frozen, and the shepherd's pie was greasy and overall just gross. And you could imagine how Ramsay felt, especially seeing his beloved shepherd's pie getting trashed. I'm sorry. I don't know. I don't want to be sorry. I'd be embarrassed if I had to serve that. <sighs> he sent the food back and decided to talk to the owners, all of whom, mind you, admitted the food was awful. Ramsay then headed straight to the kitchen to meet Danielle. Now, this poor girl was using recipes from her aunt, but she didn't seem to enjoy cooking them, or, well, anything at all. You see, she was just doing it because she had to. But the next day, the cafe was busy only because people had heard Ramsay was there. But aside from the bustling dining room, everything else was a mess. The service was chaotic, the kitchen was a disaster, and the food still wasn't any good. I'm done. I'm out of there. Anyway, after the rush had passed, Ramsey called for a meeting, and he found Danielle calm and everyone else, well, clueless. I mean, how could he help them when they didn't care enough themselves? In fact, Ramsey was so mad that he decided to leave, bail, go home then and there. According to him, it was the most hopeless situation he had ever seen. But the owners begged him to stay, literally begged him to stay. Despite everything, they still had hope and wanted to make it work. Now, Ramsey decided to help them, but he was going to set more than a few terms first. The owners needed to show commitment and energy, and it was their last chance to turn things around. And so, the next day, Ramsey came back to the cafe, determined to set things right. And he got off to a hell of a star. He gathered up the staff and told them in no uncertain terms to change their menu, change their attitude, and for goodness sake, change their standards. Couldn't have said it any better myself. Ramsey had a vision for the Hot Potato Cafe. It was crystal clear to him what they should be known for. Obviously, fresh, glorious potatoes, given the name and all. So he proposed a challenge to the four ladies running the joint. Each of them was handed a single potato. And their mission, whip up the best dish they could dream of, and the winning creation would earn its spot on the menu that evening. First up was Claire, who went for a classic baked potato. Simple, with sour cream, chives, butter, salt, and pepper. I'm sure you've made this exact same thing at home. Ramsey raised an eyebrow, but hey, at least they were using fresh produce for once. Mm, a bit too much of a plain Jane for me. Cause I'm better. Then came Eric with her twice-baked potato. She scooped out the insides, mashed them up with butter and green onion. Ramsey was just about on board. There was something missing still. No cheese on there. Yeah. I mean, it's seasoned nicely, but it just needs a little bit more. You have to take it to a, another level. Catherine, however, went a bit wild with the garlic in her dish. Ramsey's eyes watered just by smelling it, so you can imagine how pungent it was. One problem, too much garlic. Moreish taste, more, 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 but all of a sudden, bang, this powerful garlic. Finally, there was Dan Danielle, with her roasted red pepper, spinach, onions, and a generous sprinkle of Parmesan cheese. That's really good. I love the Christmas skin. Really good job. I like that one. And finally, Ramsey had found his winner. Danielle's goes on the menu. Danielle, great job. Delicious. Thank you. It was unanimous. Danielle's dish was the chosen one for the menu that evening. With the decision made, Ramsey took Danielle under his wing. He showed her the ropes of making a proper shepherd's pie, but with a twist. Potato Florentine style. Fresh ingredients, simple techniques, and a handful of Ramsey's own secrets. What's more, he even threw in some tips on running a kitchen with confidence and efficiency. As the day turned to evening, the Hot Potato Cafe had some serious energy coming into it for once. The new dish was a hit, plain and simple. Customers raved, plates were licked clean, and the four ladies couldn't have been more proud. Ramsey's magic had worked wonders. The cafe had a new star dish, a fresh outlook, and finally a little pep in their step. Who knew that the humble potato could bring such excitement to such a small cafe? They showed off a fancy new menu next to the old one. But here's the juicy part. The old menu's dishes were massive, like seriously huge. Look at that on a normal sized plate. And that's been asked to go. People were always taking home leftovers because the portions were practically enough for two meals. But that's when to really hit it home, Ramsey brought in a bunch of takeout containers and stacked them up high. 
It was all in the hopes to show how much food was actually being wasted. That's the exact number that we gave away tonight. Damn, crazy, right? See, the problem was those gigantic plates they used. So Ramsey decided to say goodbye to those plates in the only way he knew how. One, two, three. After that little bit of Greek flair, Ramsey and the crew worked their butts off all night to give the place a makeover. The following day when they opened their doors, there was a night and day difference. Doesn't that look amazing? There were brand new signs flashing outside, making it look all fancy. When you walked in, there was this cozy lounge area with nice furniture and everything. Another surprise. Ramsey brought in one of his own chefs, Richard Marsh. He came over to mentor Danielle for a whole month. Please welcome Richard Marsh. <laughs> Good to see you. Come on. Yeah. Excellent. Believe me, it was like a dream come true for her. It is a huge relief. I finally got someone that cares. Someone that's going to help me out. Ramsey wasn't content to leave the old menu in place. He whipped up a new one with fresh seasonal dishes. And get this, they got a huge donation of free potatoes for three whole months. And you better believe the owners were over the moon with these changes. I'm really excited to serve the new menu. Everything smells fresh, looks fresh, feels fresh. At the grand reopening, Ramsey even invited some old customers, including that tough food critic, Brian McManus, who was the guy that roasted them in that interview you I mentioned earlier. Yeah, that guy. This is gonna try and get out as soon as possible, it's critics. Danielle was super nervous serving the critic. Everyone was watching as he took the first bite of her dish. Was it going to be a hit or another disaster like before? Well, guess what? It's very smooth. It's good. It's so good to terrific. He loved it. From spuddy hell to potato paradise, the critic was all praises. But wait, there's still more. Both old and new customers were raving about the revamped cafe. They loved the new look and the delicious food. They couldn't stop praising Danielle for stepping up her cooking game. The owners were beaming with pride over it too. Seven, sloppy and veggie. Enjoy. Yeah, the girls cleared the board. Ramsey was super proud of them for making a big comeback, not least of which Danielle. You're gonna explode. I believe in you, now believe in yourself. Coming from THE Gordon Ramsay, this was a big deal. He even went the extra mile to get them on TV and launched a huge campaign in Philadelphia. The best part? They got a glowing review in the local newspaper. And Brian McManus had his own bit of publicity to do too, considering how blown away he was by the makeover. He wrote up a follow-up piece titled, Nightmare No More, From Dud to Spud, Overnight. After the show aired, the Hot Potato Cafe got tons of positive attention. Claire was even interviewed by the Philadelphia Inquirer. She said their busiest night ever was right after the episode aired in January 2010. Before that, they were just scraping by. But after Ramsey's changes, business was booming. And let's talk about Danielle. Not only did Ramsey like her, but so did the viewers. And they liked her so much that not only were emails pouring in from everywhere and the restaurant's website crashed because of all the attention, she got 14 freaking marriage proposals. Now, I'm glad they were getting some attention, but the parasocial part of the whole thing is still pretty ick. Sadly for her suitors, I mean viewers, Danielle left the Hot Potato Cafe just a month after the show was filmed in June 2009. And I know I teased I'd get further into it, but the reason behind her departure is actually somewhat unclear. Or at least I wasn't able to find a definitive answer anywhere. But she did drop something of a hint in the episode. Her whole reason for being there was just to help her aunts out. She was studying pre-nursing in college all the while. Now, keep that in mind, it'll be important later. But here's the big question. The Hot Potato Cafe closed, sure, but why and how? After Danielle left, the food and service just weren't measuring up. The owners couldn't handle the debt and the competition, and things went downhill real fast. Customers were not happy with the quality and started leaving bad reviews all over again. It's like Ramsey's visit never even happened. Instead of serving fresh food, they went back to the frozen stuff. To try and ride the Kitchen Nightmares wave, they put up a huge banner with Ramsey's face outside the restaurant. 
Bold strategy, considering how he feels about frozen food, Walmart nonsense aside. Well, when the lease was up in 2010, the owners saw their chance to bail. They listed the place on Craigslist for a whopping $175,000. It said, a 50-seat BYOB restaurant in the heart of the blooming Fishtown neighborhood is available, recently made famous on an international reality show with Ramsey. All furniture, SL, newer equipment and fixtures stay with the business, and of course, serious inquiries only. It finally shut down for good in August 2010, just six months after their Kitchen Nightmares episode aired. But guess what? Rumors started swirling in Philadelphia about what would take its place. People were talking about a liquor license application and wondering if it would become a bar or something. Well, in walked a married couple from New York City who knew their way around the bar business. They decided to turn the old hot potato cafe into a whiskey bar. Lloyd Whiskey Bar to be specific. Some folks doubted if a bar could survive in that area, but surprisingly, it's been a hit. 12 years later, Lloyd is still open and getting some pretty positive reviews online. They completely changed the look inside, which I mean, I would hope so if they didn't intend to keep the old name. Seriously though, the transformation is pretty impressive. Check out some of these pictures. Now, let's get back to Danielle. If you guys liked her as much as those emailers did, I'm sure you were waiting for this. In and around her pre-med studies, she jumped into the bartending scene. She worked part-time at a few places, including the Good Time Tavern another bar in the Philadelphia area. There's a picture of her with her mom, Maureen. It's unclear if Danielle worked there too, or if she was just helping out her mom for a bit. Then Danielle landed a gig at an Irish bar in Philadelphia's Terminal Market. Customers loved her there. She was a big hit behind the bar and people had nothing but good things to say about her. She really knew how to keep the customers happy. After that, Danielle spent many years bartending at Tier. She was a pro at mixing drinks and making sure everyone had a good time. It seems like wherever Danielle went, she brought her A-game. And that notion extends far beyond the confines of the food and service industry. She and her friend decided to do something really special. They joined a charity event called St. Baldrick's. If you haven't heard of it, it's a cool event where people shave their heads to help kids with cancer. Before they started shaving, Danielle felt a bit nervous. So she took a shot of Irish courage to calm her nerves. When they sat down to get their heads shaved, Danielle was a mix of nervous and excited. First, they cut off her long ponytail. Then they used a razor to shave off all her hair. It was a big change for her, but she was all in. No turning back now. Now, and what do you know? Danielle was proud of her new bald look. And then, back in 2015, she achieved something amazing. She finally became a nurse after all that studying. Danielle graduated from Jefferson Health, and now she works as a nurse at Thomas Jefferson University Hospital. It's honestly huge to see her being so successful after getting trapped in a dead-end position at the cafe. And she's not just doing well in her career, she's also happy in her personal life. Danielle is really close with her family. She loves spending time with them and having fun. And guess what? She found love. Danielle got married and now she's starting her own family. She's always sharing updates on Facebook about her happy life. I wonder if her partner was one of those 14 that dropped a proposal after the episode aired. Uh, Danielle aside though, I want to cover the rest of the characters we met during the episode. Catherine started a new job with Southwest Airlines. She moved all the way to Maui too, and she ended up loving her new job and the island life. As far as Aaron information goes, not much is out there. Alongside Claire, the two of them seem to have disappeared from social media. I could not tell you where either of them have gone, so let me know if you know something I don't. As for Hot Potato Cafe, even though the cafe didn't make it in the end, people still remember it fondly. Customers remember the good times they had there. It might not be around anymore, but it's left a mark on the people who visited. And of course, it was just weird enough to make me think I had dreamed the whole place up. So there you have it. The freshest scoop on the Hot Potato Cafe, Lloyd's, and Danielle's insane journey after the show. It's always interesting to see where people end up after a place closes down, right? But anyway, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to drop a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. And don't forget to check out this next one I've got lined up for you here. It's even crazier.